the, what some people say that he had like a 700 wives is not true. That's not true. No, it's not. Okay. He had, uh, there are a lot of people that are making up three, with Three, four wives at most. Oh, okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is our first stop? First stop? Yeah. So right now, uh, we're in the, in the center of Alambator and our first stop is the Genghis Khan horse statue. So that is the biggest statue in, uh, in Mongolia, right? Yeah, in Mongolia. It's among the biggest in Asia? Yeah, it's among the one of the biggest uh, statues in uh, Asia. And it's uh, also one of the biggest statues of Genghis Khan. Of oh, Genghis Khan, yeah. yeah. Is it the biggest in uh, Mongolia? Yeah, it's the biggest one. Yeah. Um, but I heard that there's even bigger Genghis Khan statue in Inner Mongolia, in China. In China? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's that's really cool. That's really cool. So it's located in the uh, east side of the city, around 45 kilometers. Oh, from the city. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it was built in around 2009. Oh, it was built 2009. 2009. That's and, recent. Yeah, recent, and it's one of the most famous tourist attractions in Mongolia. Yeah. As you can see, the traffic is yeah. already heavy. In the morning. In the morning, <laughs> morning rush. Lambator has um, almost 1.5 million people, so traffic jam is uh, just a usual sight here. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Goodness, look here. Look what I just see here. Ashley. Ashley. Wow. <laughs> That's so strange. They have Ashley here. I don't know this brand, so it's a... Uh, Actually, it's an American company. Oh. Yeah, they deal more with the furniture. Oh, okay. And then uh, they, they, they work with the banks. Mm -hmm. So you come here, you get a... They will... You get like a, a sofa or a bed. Then they will give you... You will take a loan. Mm -hmm. Then they'll connect with the, the bank. Then, yeah, that's what they do mostly. Actually. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so surprised. So many of these houses, they are apartment. Yeah, apartment blocks. And how come people uh, pay this? They, so they have work? Yeah, mostly people. 1.5 million? Yeah, mostly people take out mortgage, mortgage loan. Mm -hmm. So they just pay a monthly basis, the mortgage. Wow. And yeah, Mongolia is becoming, Ulaanbaatar is becoming urbanized so quickly yeah. so everywhere there's new buildings being built there there you'll see on the way yeah a lot of apartments yeah but in the outer city you will see the gear district which is like a poor area mm. that's where the there, there's no like a central heating system uh. there's no water pipes so it's really hard to live there yeah so people uh, burn coal Cause, yeah, to too. stay warm during oh, the winter I times see. and they need to go physically to the water kiosks, wells, to fetch water. Oh, to fetch water. To fetch water. So it's hard work living in yeah. a gear district. Oh. And I will take you there. Yeah, I grew, I think I told you, I grew up poor too. Mm, yeah, yeah, very, very poor. You mentioned, yeah. Yeah, I grew up very poor and I understand how hard it can be for, for some people. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very difficult for me. My mom raised us eight children. Eight children. By herself. Mm. Yeah. She was a widow. My dad died when we were young. Mm -hmm. And she has to, to fight. And we were in a refugee life. We were not living in our home country. Mm -hmm. We were in refugee life in Africa. So. Yeah, Mongolian. Mongolian, the traditional cuisine mostly consists of meat and milk products because uh, we are nomadic herders. Yeah. So it's, it's mostly like meat and you and then the various types of milk products like cheese, yogurt, 
and uh, clotted cream, horse, even horse milk. We call it kumis attic, you know. Ah. Yeah, fermented horse milk. So when we get to my aunt's, you will see a lot of milk products. Ah. So I have a question. What, which one, what car is most, the most popular in Mongolia from the, from the road? Prius. Yeah. And I, I wonder why. Yeah. Well, why Prius is so look. Yeah. One Prius, two, three, and the, this one we are in in Prius. Yeah, also and this, this one here coming three here yeah. is a Prius. Yeah. Why? why? Because What's the reason of Prius? Here? Because it's cheap, and also it's uh, uh, fuel efficient. But this one is a hybrid. Uh huh. Hybrid, but it also uses uh, less fuel than compared to other cars. So it, it comes with a cheap price from Japan and yeah, it's, it's like uh, people use it because it's like a common people's car. Oh, yeah. Prius. It's because it's uh, like um, financially efficient. Ah. Oh. Yeah, because the parts are, the parts are cheap and uh, it doesn't need that much other uh, maintenance. It's not a movement? No. Not a moment. That's the reason is because of it's cheaper and uh, cheaper and reliable. Reliable. Easy to fix. Easy to fix. But, yeah. Wow! Look at this. You may think that it's a parade of Prius. Ah. Like a parade. Yeah, like a parade. Wow. They say that one in three cars in Lombatur in Mongolia is Prius. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. So, do you see kids here appeal to study sciences? Science? Yeah, like a medical science, human science? Hmm. Mostly right now, the kids are interested in IT, information technology, computer, you know. Most kids are interested in that kind of uh, profession. But there are, of course, there are kids who wants to pursue this kind of career and uh, I know in many countries I have been going kids are afraid mm. they're kind of afraid embracing medical school they feel like like I was talking with one boy yesterday he said oh medical school you've been in school forever ah oh, yeah yeah that's why mm. and uh, it's it's a good program people will get sick every time mm -hmm. and they will need they will need medical attention. Even though technology comes, they will still need doctors. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm becoming rich in Mongolia. So one dollar is a three hundred, uh, three thousand three hundred eighty-one. Eighty-one. So and the guy here, very quick checking it on the internet. So, um, this is twenty thousand bill. A little bit like a Laos or Vietnamese money, but this one is valuable a little bit high. Not like the Philippines, because the Philippines money is a little bit valuable. Okay. Yeah. So I see the. Wow. It's a uh, 35, 40 meters tall, stainless steel, and it's a. Uh, it's a stainless steel. Stainless steel. Wow. And it was built in 2009 by the company called Jenko Tour, who is, which is uh, led by the former president of Mongolia so he's like a really proud of his country his history that's why he decided to build this statue in here and uh, that company that built it is a uh, Mongolian or Chinese Mongolian company here that is considered to be one of the biggest so welcome I'm very excited to go inside I heard you can enter and go in the house there inside but I'm gonna reserve that as a prize myself I'm very um, excited to come to see here and I've been traveling just to be excited uh, to reach this place uh, which has been dreaming a lot to visit and I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the guy who's taking the camera there. Actually, uh, to make sure that I'm not missing the shot, I'm gonna put him also in some of the videos that I'm gonna give him to them because uh, he's 
being a good guy. And then you have his car there, you just rent it. <laughs> and, he, and he will take you wherever you want. So that's the guy there. Yes. So we're gonna go inside. Yeah, go and go see, inside. I think everyone, everyone who is looking here is very curious. So we're gonna go inside and see what is happening there. Mm -hmm. And look, all these people around here, they come to see this place. Oh my goodness, they're climbing there. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, look at all this. And Mongolia looks like they like a statue. There's another statue there. But as for now, we're gonna go inside here. And let's see. And after this, you know what? We're gonna go eat to his aunt. And there's some camels there. You see some camels. We're gonna go see them too. But now, inside here. I heard is this guy lived for long and I'm gonna ask him a few questions why why they they build it late he's gonna tell me that because he just built it in 2009 and I will ask him why why it took too long to have I heard there were some kind of conflicts or I don't know misunderstanding on build it acknowledging him and uh, all those we're gonna have because he's very knowledgeable he's gonna tell us um, many things and uh, you would like to know that too so we go inside they have these stairs that can help you your heart <laughs> what is happening here yeah I think most of these visitors who are coming here they're probably from China I think most of the visits visited here and I, I may be the only black <laughs> oh my my slide look my slide is coming out <laughs> so let us inside even see look at how tall it is it is just humongous so so big you China Korea so ah, you have a biggest church in the world what's the name church very very big big church in South Korea and Seoul okay never mind I'm from Texas yeah. Korea good uh, glass good shit yeah. Oh. yeah. You come here to do what? <laughs> Why are you here? Uh, just uh, traveling. Just to just see. Traveling. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just you, this structure. You know that guy? Yeah, just Chinggis Khan. Chinggis Khan? Yeah, Chinggis Khan. You will hear people take, talking his name in different because in Europe they say his name differently, in America differently, but we're going to have the original name here. And the guy behind the camera there, he's gonna tell us his actual name. All people will know they can, but but the first name, the way they say it, people have been writing it in different way. So this is the place where you enter here, the entrance. Dear. That's now you can pay with the card too. Mm, okay, let me get the tickets from You can there. pay with the card too? Um, no, oh, they okay. accept uh, cash. cash? Yeah. So, you good? Yeah, we got yeah. the tickets here. And uh, how much? 20,000. 20,000 per person. Per person, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the price is also here. The price is here, yeah. 20,000. So here is the Chinggis Khan Stadium Complex. So uh, B1 floor, we have Museum of Mongolian Empire, cultural exhibition, 
and our first floor, which is now we are here, coffee shop and uh, pictures of Mongolian kings, souvenir shop and the biggest Mongolian boot, <laughs> which we will see soon, and the rental shop, traditional calligraphy. The second floor is Golden Whip Restaurant, pictures of Mongolian kings, and the third floor is where is the horse's head, where we'll go up and see the surroundings. So it's like three floor complex. I'm, I'm excited. Hello. Nigu. 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 We are not here. So which way we go? So, so this is the pictures of Mongolian kings. Oh. The lineage, lineage of Genghis Khan. Uh, oh. On top, this is the Genghis Khan, and then his sons, grandsons, grand-grandsons. So here we are inside the Genghis Khan statue complex, and uh, when you enter this place, the first thing you see is the, the giant whip that was uh, supposed to be found by Genghis Khan. It's a symbolic gesture. Uh, the, the reason why I decided to build this complex here in this place is that there's a story behind it. Uh, when Genghis Khan was uh, traveling, he found a whip from this place and in the Mongolian culture uh, finding a whip is uh, considered a sign of luck and uh, Chinggis Khan took it as a sign for his divine right to conquer the world and bring peace to the land. So he uh, it actually inspired him to travel far lands and conquer lands and unite all the nations. So everything started from here, you can say that. And uh, it's a part of Mongolian culture. And as you can see, Mongolian whip is, uh, is uh, made of from this long stick. And then the, in the bottom, there's a, a leather strap so you can whip the horse. So, and also in the here, you'll see the sons and grandsons of Genghis Khan. And, and yeah, here's the, the biggest boot in the world. Um, I don't know why they put this here, and uh, I'm not sure about the story behind this, but it's a really uh, interesting um, thing to see. Why, why this statue was built in 2009, not, not in 1940, 1950s? Why, mm. why too late? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Mongolia became a democratic country in 1990 and uh, before that Mongolia was a, a communist country. So in the communist time the, the Mongolian history was uh, the, the, we weren't allowed to talk about Genghis Khan at all because of the communism, you know, and uh, the religious freedom and uh, the, we were, freedom was suppressed during the communist time. So, and after 1990, we become democratic country and we were allowed to talk about our history and our talk, we were allowed to talk about Genghis Khan uh, freely and we, we, we can feel proud again. Uh, so, and um, they, they, they've been talking about building this complex for many years, since 1990, and because of the fund, because of the lack of funding, you know, lack of planning, it was delayed, delayed, and then uh, it was finally built in 2009, built by the uh, company called Jenko, and which is owned, uh, which is uh, founded by a guy called Hatma Batolaga, who is a former president of Mongolia, and he's uh, really proud of his country, he's proud of his people, proud of his nation. That's why he decided to invest a lot of money into this project. So, and that's the story behind this uh, complex. Young people. Like young people. How do they appreciate? Do they see as a valuable or they are taken by the modern world? From your experience, I know you work with the sport mm -hmm. and you, you, you are more knowledgeable. So how youth, I want to hear the part of the youth, mm -hmm. how do they appreciate this? How do they think about this? Uh -huh, mm -hmm. Well, in the Mongolian children, they grew up uh, reading their history, reading the history of the nation, and from young age, we, we taught our children, we teach our children to learn to take pride in their history, in their culture, in their people. So when, when the children see this uh, statue complex and visit it, 
they also feel pride. They also feel very proud of their history, their culture. So that it's because we want to pass on our heritage to our to the, our next generation. So yeah, yeah, young people understand how important it is for our nation, for our history. So they also feel very proud, and also we teach them to continue uh, this tradition, this culture. So they feel also responsible, the responsibility also they feel really proud of their history. So young people are also really proud. Yeah. So do school organize a trip to come to visit here? Because if you learn from a history, you don't come to see, you will still miss some part. Yeah. Do school organize like a trip, like a school trip to come here? Yes, the schools organize uh, trips to here and uh, also uh, even the kindergarten kids, they come here as a school trip. Uh, so because it's in the school uh, curriculum to uh, learn about their history and so it's, it's actually a part of the school program to visit this place. So uh, Mongolian children come here as a as a program school program yeah you are proud of how keep people are still keeping in their tradition about this guy and mm. his legacy yes yes i'm really proud and i'm really happy that uh, the next generation is learning about our uh, our nation's history and culture and uh, the and also we are really happy that we are passing our knowledge and also everything to the next generation also restaurant inside here yeah second floor uh, which makes sense after climbing there and you're tired you can just come and have yeah. some food here and uh, there's sense. some coffee shops here souvenir shops here museum here yeah and uh, where are we going next we're going up up yeah we and we're gonna go next to this boot yeah the biggest boot in the world yeah biggest boot in the world <laughs> yeah. so Believe or not, this is the biggest boot in the world. And it's big. Look here. If you don't believe, look. Look just this part. <laughs> it is so, so big. Like, I don't know how long. And it goes all the way up there. I don't know how long it takes to, to, have, uh, to, to, to make these boots. My goodness. That's really... Amazing. That's really amazing. Hey, you? Four? You? You go. No. Four. That's a hug. That's perfect. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> oh yeah, love. <laughs> you're up, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, these people are from South Korea. So now we're going in the most interesting part, which is up there. And uh, I'm very excited to go. And we're gonna go inside the horse. That's what I heard. Yeah, we're gonna go up the, on the head, head of the horse. Head of the horse. So. And I heard that on the second floor they have a restaurant. Yeah. And the place was just built. Look at that boat there. The place was just built. Look, they're putting some cash here. Oh, yeah. Look. So they uh, throw, throw money there yeah. as an offering. So oh. you, you roll the money and uh, throw there. Uh, be careful not to. If you have a small bill, you can also do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna try it too. Yeah. Let me try it too. Is it? You and you need to make sure that you, it doesn't fall. Yeah. Make sure it's. It it's hit there. The, yeah. It <laughs> yeah. So. This is what we're gonna do. Okay. Do some uh, small, smaller bill. Smaller? Yeah, smaller bill. Okay. Like uh, this? Uh, maybe this one. Yeah. 
The small okay. one. The small okay. one. So I'm going to try to to roll it and you throw it away. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aim. Aim. And you need to make sure that you hit it there. Yeah. Okay. Make sure it hit the, the area. <laughs> so let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this is a... It's like a good luck offering. A uh, good luck offering. Yeah. So let's see if it's going to go there. You need to make sure that it doesn't fall. If it falls, you're losing your... If it falls, you're losing your luck. No, 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 it's okay. No. <laughs> you can go, go down and do uh, it again. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. I make it. <laughs> yeah. I make it on the top. So yeah. So that we You got it. So we're going to go to the, to, yeah. the, to the head there. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything, anything about that he left behind that the people can see today? By Chinggis Khan? Yeah. Anything physical? Uh, no. No, because yeah. he lived... 13th century. Oh, that's so, long. That's so long time. So, long. so it's impossible to find. Yeah. And also, Mongolians are very secretive about his uh, possessions, his things, because it's like really sacred. Oh, so, crazy. it's not. It's not like you can find anything he's used now, because if 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 there's something he's used now, it will be really like secretive, deep hidden inside, deep inside. Uh, so we still here at the Genghis Khan um, monument and these guys behind here they are from Siberia. They came to visit here. As you know, Russia has a big uh, connection. And the guy says he's gonna go bring a gift for us. Uh, and I ask why. And they say they just they like us. So okay, I, I don't know. Oh, that's a gift. Oh, present. Oh, that's a present. From Siberia, Kakashi Republic. Oh, which republic? Our home. Home. Oh. Hakasia. Hakasia. Oh, he's, oh. he's from this uh, region in Russia, Hakasia, and yes. it's his present for you. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Many places. Good. Memorials. Memorials. Uh -huh. Oh. Do you have. Uh, Maybe I should go there one day. Okay. So this is. Uh, yeah, I just got this gift from these guys. Here. Mm. Oh. Their country is there. And from Siberia. How. How you yeah. how you fly there? Samolet or after mobile. Machine car. They drive? Yeah, they drive. They From there to here? Yeah, yeah. How many hours? Сколько времени приехали? Спасибо. Двое суток. Два дня. Two days. Two days. Oh, that long. Yeah. No flight. No. No flight. Ah. Ah. Uh, there's a flight, but they decided to use cars because it's more like adventurous. Oh. Yeah, there's a flight, but they decided to uh, to, to drive. Just. How how you how okay. you go? Uh, photo. Photo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, thank you. Thank you. Спасибо. 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 Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, good look. Oh. It's two. I see huh? Texas. Where? Here. Oh, okay. This is Texas there. This is Texas? Yeah. This. Here. This one. Yeah, oh, this okay. is the state of Texas. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that Texas. Mm -hmm. Wow. What does it mean? And, uh, oh. <laughs> Mongolia 
2024. Hello. 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 This is the whip he found. Oh, this is the one. The one he found oh. from here. And he took it as a sign for his divine rights. Oh, I see. He took it as a sign. Oh. Because in Mongolian culture, finding a whip is just considered a luck. Oh, the luck. Oh, the, considered you're lucky or special. Oh. And you use, it, you use this for horses? Yeah, for horses, you know, whipping. Oh, whipping. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Mm, that's the hand. I'm gonna go to the head. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so beautiful. That's the sword. Poche, mm. poche, This is the. This is the just incredible i i wasn't expected the first and this is a good way to keep a history because history shouldn't remain on the books only it should also be something physical like this where people can they can also see the reality not only reading or hearing from the news i think to me, every Mongolian should come here first. Mm -hmm. And also, I heard that the empire that he has went from, from uh, I think, from Mongolia and expanded all the way to Europe, I think? Yeah, to Europe. all the way to Hungary. To Hungary, so yeah. that's, that's really... Impressive. And one thing I read, it's that this guy was raised by a single mother. Mm -hmm. That's what I read. And yeah. actually that caused him to have like a brave heart and uh, start building up very, very tough life. And, you know, sometimes for you to become successful in life, you need to face some challenges. And through challenges, you can have some good path of life and we've been seeing that a lot of people went through challenges in young child and a young childhood they became very strong people and this guy here is a, is really a good example he didn't know that he will be a monument of the country before and if you just think in your brain how being raised by this single mother and becoming someone like this from nothing, from nothing, from zero, and become a most powerful person. Not only in Mongolia, but the most powerful person in the world. Because I heard that a lot of Asian population they have is the DNA. So that's uh, that's really impressive. You, I heard that he was raised by a single mother. Mm. Tell me a little bit how he became. How his mom became a single mother. Mm -hmm. His life story is really incredible, and there's a lot of lot to learn from his uh, life lessons. And uh, when he was nine years old, his father was uh, murdered by the, by the rival clan. And after that, his family was abandoned by his own clan because his father was the leader of the clan, and because and after his father was. Uh, murdered his own clan uh, just abandoned his family so he was left uh, with his mother and his brothers who, and he was the eldest son that so that's why he had this responsibility to take care of 
his brothers, young brothers. And uh, through sheer uh, willpower, he, he and his family survived. And that's why he became really a strong person, his childhood. And also, the, it was a 13th century and it went a different time. And the, his rival clans were constantly trying to hunt him down and kill him because he had a royal blood in his royalty in his blood and they were afraid that uh, he would rise to become a powerful person and take a revenge so he was constantly on the run when he was in teenage years and they were trying to catch him trying to hunt him down and kill him and all these tough years made him really a strong person both physically and mentally and i think it played really important role I'm, uh, for his we character live, like, development and, we live, like, here. and oh, uh, here. Yeah. to grow yeah. as a like person. Yeah. And, oh, okay. and, uh, wow! Someone from Texas visited yeah. here. Yeah. here. That's really uh, <laughs> late years. That's really so incredible. there's a yeah. good lesson wow. in this story. I'm and uh, uh, you can face difficult challenges in your life, but it doesn't mean it's uh, it's wrong or something like that. You can take lessons from it and you can use it as a grow as a person so he wow. was he was also really adaptable you know he made uh, good friends and uh, he was really good at uh, finding uh, goodness in other people and uh, so he made he chose his uh, friends really carefully and that's why it's also one of the reasons why he became a really powerful leader. So choose your friends wisely and also stay true to yourself and uh, always be humble. And Sorry to interrupt. Hey, he just said something I don't want to, especially youth who are watching here, I don't want you to miss this. He repeated two times, choose your friend carefully. And this guy was known for that choosing the friend carefully that's the most important things mm -hmm. because sometimes we choose our friend emotionally mm -hmm. carefully sorry to interrupt <laughs> yeah yeah and his friends from his childhood uh become his warriors in the future so he with his friends he conquered half the world so his, his life story is really incredible and, uh, i think everybody should everybody should I've never heard a story like him because when you hear a story, you think that it's a famous story. Mm -hmm. So uh, I need to make sure my camera is not blowing up. Sorry. So when I heard his story, uh, uh, you may think that it's something I made up. Or, because that's what you may think. How can someone explain it to a piece of fire? Yeah. And how about this DNA thing? What do you think about that? They say that a lot of people have his DNA. Uh, yeah. is, it a, is it a joke or? I think it's like half true. Like I think because uh, Chinggis Khan conquered so many countries, so many lands, and uh, well, he had four four boys, and he had two, three wives. But I think it's, it means because Mongolia was so powerful, it means like Mongolians spread their genetics by conquering. So it's like oh. half true, yeah. Oh, it's like as a joke, but also there's a truth in it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the, what some people say that he had like a 700 wives is not true. No, it's not true. Not it's true. Not. Okay. He had, uh, there are a lot of people that are making up three, this three, four wives at most. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, four boys. Four boys okay. and some girls. Yeah. But the f boys, he divided his empire to his four boys. So oh. after his death, his Mongolian Great Empire, Great Mongol Empire, was divided into four parts for his four sons to lead. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I just want to correct something here. What you read, the pay attention what you read. That's why I like coming on the ground and I see people like this, very educated guy living in Mongolia, and can tell you more about the truth. But what you can read, everyone make his his own story there. I just to attract people, but it's good to go on the ground and they see. Yeah. The also, YouTube. yeah, I want to tell you, uh, young guys, young children who were dreaming of something big, everything started from young boy. He was also just a young boy, 
and uh, living in the country, you know, in the west of the plain like this. And uh, he just pursued his dream, his goal, and he was really dedicated. And he worked hard. So nothing is impossible with this when you are hard, working hard and to stay true to yourself and be consistent. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah, I agree with you. When you're pursuing your goal, you need to be more ambitious and yeah. just a focusing and be brave, not fearful. Because this guy looks like he buried the fear. Yeah. He didn't have any fear with him. Yeah. Wow, that's that's incredible. Yeah. Oh, you have the weapons. This one. Oh, you forgot to wear weapons. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> For, I need shit. Like, so look at this. Yeah. I think yeah. Now I look good. Yeah. Wow. Take your sword and go to war. <laughs> that's the. Until Liverpool, we're gonna conquer until Liverpool. Yeah. Uh -huh. So left hand. Left hand. Mm -hmm. That's a shield. Uh huh. Ah, so you hold the shield yeah, like this. Like, yeah. And it's right heavy. hand is a sword. Um, yeah. Okay, it opens. So, yeah. Okay. Take your sword and your right hand. So that's how you battle like right hand, sword, left hand, like shield. Ah. Okay, let's go. So Costa is ready to conquer the world <laughs> with his Oh my god, look at that sword. I look like a real Let's go to Mongo. the gear. The oh. gear, yeah. So there. Yeah. They didn't wear any uh, any slider though. <laughs> Wow, okay, sit, so sit, uh, sit, and uh, on the, on the seat. Okay. Perfect. Okay, show your belt, and uh, okay. Okay. Do you know the Viking chant like, doof, doof, you know? Like this? <laughs> you know, banging your shield and swords together. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the Viking way. Yeah. And we have a queen there too. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Genghis Khan. Say that name slowly. The the first one. Chinggis. Oh, it's Chinggis. Chinggis. Chinggis Khan. Okay. Khan. We call it Khan. Khan. Yeah. Khan. Oh. So you heard now well because people have been pronouncing his name in different way. Like uh, some people say Chinggis Khan. Some but it a Chinggis. Yeah, but yeah. the proper way proper is... Way, proper uh, uh, way is Chinggis Khan. Chinggis Khan. Well, um, I think we're going to conclude this top uh, visit now. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I, I just want to thank you so much. His channel is very easy to see. And that's what I found it. It's okay. called Rio Mongolia. Yeah. So it's very simple. And even if you go on Facebook, you write with Rio Mongolia. That's the way I found him. Mm -hmm. I first wrote to him on uh, YouTube. He might be a busy guy. So I went on Facebook. I had to search for Rio Mongolia. I found him. Yeah. So I think uh, it's good to find the real people to get the real story. 